Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam, and I am uh, here as part of the Community Energy Coach Program. And our program supports communities, local governments, and industry stakeholders in the promotion of the Clean BC rebate programs, as well as the education of heat pumps. We are also joined today by my colleague, Elena, who will be presenting for you. Uh, this webinar, of course, is going to be recorded, and today is November 24th, 2021, and all rebate amounts are reflective of what is available today. For the most up-to-date information, always check out betterhomesbc.ca. We are also joined by Laura with the uh, City of Port Moody, and she is the Senior Sustainability and Energy Coordinator. We'll be sharing uh, some content on the city and the GHG reduction plan. And I encourage everyone to use the chat box during the webinar for any questions that you might have. I will be monitoring the chat and do my best to answer those questions along the way. And we will again have that Q&A at the end as well. If you'd rather wait till the end and take yourself off mute to ask a question. The recording today, as well as a copy of the slides and Q&A will be shared in a follow up email within the next week or so for everyone as well. So some good resources to come your way. And we would like to acknowledge with respect the Coast and Strait Salish and Wissanic peoples on whose traditional unceded territory we are presenting today, as well as the Lekwungen, Songhees, Esquimalt and Wissanic whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. And I enjoy um, invite everyone to also take a moment to acknowledge the traditional territory you're joining us on. And with that, I'll pass things off uh, to Laura with the city for some really awesome slides for Port Moody. Great. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. And uh, it's a pleasure to join you tonight uh, from the ancestral and unceded territories of the Coquitlam, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil Waututh peoples. Uh, as Sam said, my name is Laura Sampiner, and I'm the Senior Sustainability and Energy Coordinator with the City of Port Moody. And I just want to thank you all for taking some time out of your busy, busy evenings to join this webinar. And we hope you're able to leave tonight with uh, some really helpful information. And uh, I just wanted to also thank um, our community energy coaches, Elena and Sam, for joining and making this webinar possible. And I'll briefly share some information on what the city is working on to uh, reduce our emissions from buildings in our community. So as many of you know, Port Moody has a climate action plan that was adopted in the summer of 2020, outlining 54 actions that the city can take to become a carbon neutral, climate resilient community by 2050. And then in February of 2021, staff began implementing the Climate Action Plan through the Phase 1 Climate Action Implementation Strategy. And this strategy involves kicking off 23 out of the 54 actions from the Climate Action Plan that will play a really big role in setting us up for deep emissions reductions, uh, as well as resilience to meet the goals and the objectives in the plan. And as staff are implementing these 23 actions, uh, you as community members can expect that engagement opportunities for you, um, action updates, results and outcomes and any impactful project de decisions will be shared. So here's some information on where our GHG emissions come from in Port Moody. So our individual and collective daily activities result in releasing these greenhouse gas emissions or GHGs that contribute to climate change, including transporting people and goods, heating and cooling buildings, heating hot water, and uh, purchased goods and materials that sometimes end up in the landfill. Um, the latest data that we have is actually from 2016 for our community emissions, and uh, these activities resulted in 103,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. And you can see from the pie chart, sorry, that's a little bit fuzzy for some reason, um, that most of our community emissions are a result of vehicles, so that's 53%, and then second, heating and cooling buildings at 46%. So that's why tonight is a, a really great opportunity to share some information about how we can reduce um, that uh, emissions from buildings. So let's break it down a little bit further in to understand um, the city's impact in this pie as well. So that's the chart on the right hand side of the screen. And the city's emissions are a result of delivering some of our, our key city services to residents, including emergency services like fire, police, and emergency preparedness, waste management like garbage, recycling, and green waste collection, uh, recreation, parks and trails management, and uh, maintenance of our roads and sidewalks. 
And so most of the city's emissions come from buildings at 54%. Uh, and then secondly, from our fleet vehicles at 35%. So the city is directly responsible for about one to 2% of our community emissions. So through the climate action plan implementation strategy, staff have been making progress on several building related actions. And so these include updating our sustainability report card, which is a tool to assess the impact of development applications that are submitted to the city. And this update includes to better reflect the latest climate science and community priorities. We're also working on assessing all of our city owned facilities to understand where there are opportunities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to make sure that our facilities are prepared for climate impacts such as flooding wildfire and extreme heat. And there are a few areas where local governments don't have the authority to act and therefore staff are advocating for greater authority for local governments, as well as financing tools and other policies essential for achieving zero emission buildings. And lastly, staff are in the midst of developing a climate ready homes and buildings plan that will outline strategies to reduce emissions from new and existing buildings uh, and homes and ensure that um, they are resilient to climate change. And I'll just go into a little bit more detail on this plan. Um, so as mentioned, we're developing this plan that will outline specific actions that the city residents and business owners can take to make homes and buildings in Port Moody climate ready. And so what does climate ready actually mean? Um, that means that our, our home or a building is one that has been designed or mod modified uh, to meet low carbon and high energy efficiency standards and um, is able to manage many of the risks related to climate change, such as heat related illness, poor indoor air quality or damages uh, from flooding or windstorms. And so this plan will really um, outline um, actions that will achieve the ambitious goals and targets stated on the screen. And, and those are from our climate action plan. And uh, so the, the purpose of um, engaging on developing this climate ready homes and buildings plan is to raise awareness on some of the critical importance of emissions reductions and climate resilience in our building stock in Port Moody. Um, on the costs and responsibilities and the trade-offs of different emissions reduction actions and uh, on the existing emissions reduction programs and significant opportunities for those uh, GHG emission reductions. And to also explore ideas and information to get feedback on proposed strategies that we're considering as a part of this plan um, and to understand any concerns or perceived barriers that would prevent um, residents, businesses in the city from taking these um, uh, actions. And then to help try and mobilize um, some collaborative action in terms of helping property owners, managers, and renters understand some of the strategies that they can take to support the city's low carbon resilience goals, and then identifying opportunities for partnerships and alignment with regional opportunity with uh, yeah, regional initiatives. Um, and just quickly to wrap up here. Um, Staff are, are planning to continue engagement with stakeholders into the new year on developing the climate ready homes and buildings plan and, and developing those strategies. Uh, with those stakeholders throughout the winter. And the idea is to present the draft climate ready homes and buildings plan to council for consideration uh, later on in 2022 and into the spring and summer. And the city's hoping that you as residents and, and some of you as business owners will share your thoughts with us through um, a community survey that will really help shape the climate ready homes and buildings plan. And um, I'll, I'll post a link in the chat in a moment. Um, but you'll have to register with engageportmoody.ca to fill out the survey, but don't worry, your results are completely anonymous. Um, and the survey closes on December 5th. So we're hoping that people can take their time to, to fill out that opportunity before that. Um, so with that, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions in the chat or at the end in the Q&A period. If you'd like to follow up on any information in this presentation um, about the Climate Ready Homes and Buildings Plan or just about climate action in general in Port Moody, um, please feel free to send an email to climateaction at portmoody.ca. Thank you so much. Okay, and with that, I will be taking over. Um, hello, my name is Elena, and I'm really excited to be teaching you more about heat pumps today. Um, yeah, thank you so much for taking some time to learn more about heat pumps. Um, I'm just going to see how I can share my screen here. The, the land acknowledgements. So um, yeah, what are we going to talk about today? So first of all, um, I will explain what an air source heat pump is and how it works. 
I will share the most common, most popular types of heat pumps with you. And of course, uh, I will let you know why we get so excited about heat pumps. Um, we will share tips about things you should know before you buy a heat pump, things you should know once you have bought a heat pump. And of course, we will get into the rebate. So I know a few people joined after um, Sam gave her introduction, but just, um, just as a disclaimer again, the rebates that are that we are discussing today will be available as of today, um, November 20, wow, that's embarrassing. I forgot what date it is. November 24th, 2021. Um, and I will be sharing a resource with you where you can find all the up-to-date information about the heat pumps, uh, the heat pump rebates that are out there. And we will have some time for questions at the end. So if you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to put that in the chat box and my colleague Sam will do her best to answer them all. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Although before we do talk about heat pumps, there is a concept I wanna talk about that is um, equally important as understanding heat pumps and that's the house as a system concept or approach. So house as a system just says that um, your house is made of components that all affect each other. So that could be your mechanical systems, your building envelope and so on. And when you change one of those components, it will affect others. So talking about getting a heat pump or any new heating system installed, it is very important to understand that prioritizing upgrades to your building envelope, so that's um, the, your insulation levels and the air tightness of your home and the windows and doors is very important because you could be installing the best heat pump that has ever existed. Um, if you your home is poorly insulated or you know it's very leaky, then you lose all that heat through the building envelope and consequently you lose a lot of money. Um, so for that, before you get started with any bigger renovation project, we always recommend considering to start with an Energet home evaluation. So that's a whole home assessment where you get unbiased and prioritized recommendations of where to get started with your renovation and what the logical steps are. But we'll talk more about that later. But we're here to learn about heat pumps. So let's get started with that. First of all, a heat pump is an electric heating system. And it's not only a heating system, it also can function as an air conditioning unit all in one system. It is also the most energy efficient heating system that you can possibly get. It's about three to four times as energy efficient as the most high efficient gas furnace or as electric baseboards or an electric furnace. In BC, we're also extremely fortunate that uh, most of our electricity comes from hydropower. So that is considered carbon neutral or almost carbon neutral. And that makes heat pumps the most climate friendly and energy efficient way to heat your home here in BC. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that all of you actually have a heat pump at home or a type of heat pump because your refrigerator is basically an insulated box with a type of heat pump in it. So I wanna show you that with this picture. In your refrigerator, there are these refrigerant lines that gives it the name. And those refrig that refrigerant will absorb heat energy from your fridge uh, transfer it, oops, where's my mouse? Transfer it through a compressor that pumps it up to a higher temperature level and releases that heat energy that was in your fridge to the inside of your home. So uh, while we all try to avoid taking a look at what's behind our fridges, um, if you did, you would notice that there is warm air coming out. And that's exactly what a heat pump would do too. It moves heat, absorbs and moves heat from one place and transfers it to another. And I'll show you that with um, a picture of an actual heat pump. So what we see here is the exterior of a home and the interior of a home on the right-hand side. And this is a type of heat pump that we call a central system. 
And it's called that because it distributes heat through ductwork throughout the house, like a furnace. And on the exterior side of the home, you see the outdoor unit. In that outdoor unit, there's the refrigerant that you also find in your fridge, as well as the compressor sits in here as well. And what it does on a cold winter day, there is still enough heat energy left in the ambient air, even though it's cold, for the refrigerant to absorb that heat energy. The refrigerant then goes through the compressor where that heat energy is pumped up to a higher temperature level and is then transferred to the inside of the home where it's distributed through ductwork through your entire house. And that actually also works in reverse. So let's say it's a really hot, humid summer day and it's really warm in your home. Then with your thermostat, you can switch from the heat pump to a, you know, to cooling mode. And in that case, what it does is that it just reverses the cycle of the refrigerant. So now the refrigerant absorbs all the heat energy, well, not all of it, but absorbs heat energy from the inside of the home, transfers it to the outside, it goes through that compressor, and then it gets released to the exterior of the home. And by that, the heat pump would cool your home on a summer day. So that's why we are so excited about a heat pump because it not only does it very efficiently, but also it functions as a heating and a cooling system. So here uh, is a really nice little, um, yeah, um, a GIF, I guess, <laughs> that explains how a heat pump works. This is a different type of heat pump. So it has a smaller outdoor unit. And then it's connected with refrigerant lines, um, not to a air handler system with ductwork, but to an indoor head. So we call that a ductless or a mini split heat pump. And what it does, it absorbs um, heat energy from the ambient air, transfers it to the inside, and then it's distributed through this indoor head here. And that brings me to the next point, and that is what types of heat pumps do we know or do we most commonly use here in BC? And the first one is this central ducted heat pump that you just saw. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a central heating system and it uses ductwork that provides um, central heat throughout your house. So it's pretty suitable for homes that already have pre-existing ductwork. In real life, this is what it can look like. And among those central system heat pumps, there are also the dual fuel ducted heat pumps. So by dual fuel, we just mean that it's a heat pump that integrates a natural gas or a propane furnace as one system. You see it here. Um, here is the um, heat pump and the natural gas part in one system. And that fossil fuel backup would only be used as a backup when the outdoor temperature goes below a certain set point. Um, in the climate of Vancouver Island or the lower mainland where you are, um, having a dual, uh, uh, sorry, a fossil fuel backup is not necessary um, because of the mild winters and lots of central system heat pumps can come with an integrated electric resistance backup, but um, that is definitely an option. And then that was the other heat pump where you saw the little uh, animated picture there. It's the ductless mini split heat pump. So ductless mini split heat pumps, they generally have a smaller outdoor unit. And what's um, so special about them is that instead of requiring ductwork throughout the whole house, they commonly have one or multiple indoor heads mounted on, usually mounted on the top of the wall, kind of looks like this. And they have come with different names. So sometimes they're called mini split or multi split. It's, it's if it's multiple heads. Sometimes they're just called split system or ducted mini splits are the ones that um, that can connect to mini ducts that are installed in the attic or in a crawl space to connect to the odd bedroom. So there's a lot of different um, options for mini split heat pumps. When making a decision between mini split or central system, 
Uh, here's a little comparison. So both types of heat pumps do provide air conditioning um, and only the ductless heat pump provides zonal heating. So zonal heating just means that uh, different parts of the home can be heated to different temperature levels. Of course, on the other hand, only the central system requires ductwork. And um, some of you might not know this, um, only, well, both heat pump types, they provide air filtration and dehumidification. We'll get into more detail about that later. But it's, uh, you know, every home is different, so it's hard to make uh, a call for your specific home. However, generally speaking, of course, a home that has pre-existing ductwork from a gas or electric furnace, um, a central system may make a lot of sense for that home. Um, whereas where there's homes that only have electric baseboards or a wood stove, um, it would be very costly to install that ductwork. So those homes um, are great for ductless heat pumps, mini splits, or the homes that just want zonal heating. Uh, get into detail about that later as well. So uh, talking about cost of a heat pump, that is a very common uh, question. I don't blame people wanting to know about the cost. However, um, the, it is very, very hard to give a ballpark number of how much a heat pump will cost. It's one of those annoying, it highly depends answers. So we had some data from an older rebate program where folks switched from oil to a heat pump. And from those participants in that program, um, we got a lot of data about the cost of a heat pump. And we got to say that the cost range ranged <laughs> um, significantly. So there were heat pumps that were starting at $4,000 and then there were heat pumps that were well over $20,000. So the range is just very broad. That's um, why I wanna bring that up just so you take that into consideration when seeing those numbers because what you see here is the absolute, um, at the, the higher end of the medium uh, sorry, the average cost of a heat pump. Um, but your heat pump could be a lot lower than this or a lot more expensive than this. But generally speaking, um, the rebates are amazing at the moment for heat pump installation. Of course, we'll talk a lot more about that later. And in comparison to a natural gas furnace after rebates, heat pumps are actually very comparable. Okay. Um, now, I really, I'm excited to share with you why we are excited about heat pumps. And to summarize it, it's really that year-round comfort, um, heating and cooling in one system. Of course, um, you know, that's something that's important to all of us, the climate-friendly home. It is the most efficient energy, um, energy-efficient heating and cooling system. It provides you with a healthier home. And if you are switching from a fossil fuel, you won't pay um, carbon tax on your energy bills. So let's take a closer look at that. First of all, the efficiency. So a lot of people ask, well, how can a heat pump be 300, 400% efficient? So the reason is because a heat pump works drastically different than any other heating system, like especially fossil fuel heating systems that burn a fuel to turn the energy in that fuel into heat energy. In the case of a heat pump, you don't use the electricity to create heat from scratch. The heat pump absorbs heat energy that's already available in the ambient air and only uses extra electricity that you pay for to operate the compressor, for example, to pump that heat energy that's already available up to a higher temperature level. So you get a lot more heat output than the electric input that you have to pay for. And that's what makes the heat pump so unique and definitely the most cost-effective electric heating system because in comparison, electric baseboards or an electric furnace, they have an efficiency of 100%, which is great. They turn 100% of the electricity, energy and the electricity into heat energy. However, the heat pump can provide much more 
um, for less electricity. And climate change is definitely a real threat. I'm pretty sure we're, you know, we're all too aware of that now after those floods, especially. Um, and heat pumps are really the heating system to help lower our greenhouse gas emissions in homes. So what we see here is a publication from the Capital Regional District uh, in BC. And what they've done is they modeled the same home. They did an energy model on a home and they modeled it with a, an oil furnace a gas furnace, and then a heat pump to compare greenhouse gas emissions. And I mean, it's really not a surprise that oil heating is probably not a great idea in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. But even in comparison, a natural gas furnace still has significant greenhouse gas emissions, whereas the heat pump combined with its efficiency and um, you know our unique situation that we have so much hydroelectricity in BC is really by far the most climate friendly heating system and a great solution for the emissions in our homes and buildings. Well, I touched on that earlier, heat pumps do provide air filtration and humidity control, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so it helps rid your home of indoor pollutants dust, pollen, and any other allergens. So if you have any family members or you know any people in your household who struggle with allergies, then a heat pump is a really great choice. And also quite frankly, unfortunately, we are experiencing those forest fires on a yearly basis now. And that can really help with um, the smoke in your home. Also, uh, we'll be sharing the tips about how to operate a heat pump, uh, but heat pumps are very easy to operate and the, they like it the most when you just leave them at a certain temperature level. So they use the set it and forget it principle. Um, very low maintenance, um, but I'll get into detail about that in a sec. Zonal heating is of course only true for mini split heat pumps. So that is a really great option if you have a basement suite, like a legal or a rental suite, um, and you'd want to be able to heat upstairs different than your suite, uh, or you have just areas in your home that you want to heat to a different temperature level than your office or you know your bedroom. Um, a mini split heat pump is a really, really great option for that. And also, quite frankly, heat pumps simply are just the heating system of the future. That is where the market is going, where we are going with our emissions. And we got this couple here um, from Saanich on Vancouver Island. And they, for them, it was really important to make their home ready for climate change and also just ready for the future. So they got solar panels installed, they got an electric vehicle, and it was also very important to move away from their fossil fuel heating system. And they got a heat pump installed and enjoy that air conditioning in the summer and the very efficient heating in the winter. Also, I don't think that a lot of you heat with wood, uh, but if you do and you are relying on wood as a heating system, then a heat pump is a really great upgrade, especially those mini split ductless heat pumps so you can then enjoy wood just for uh, not wood um, fire just for ambience. All right, I hope that you are convinced that heat pumps are a really great system to consider, but I do want to share a few tips with you of things you should know before you buy a heat pump. And first and foremost, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to really put in the effort to do research and go with a qualified installer and avoid buying wholesale online. So choosing a good installer is absolutely um, important. So we will share where you can find um, heat pump contractors later, but it is important that you ask a lot of questions. You know, are you specializing in heat pumps? Do you know about the rebates out there? 
um, do you provide free quotes and all these things? And then it's important to get multiple quotes from different contractors, just so you do have the comparison. Equally important is what I touched on at the very, very beginning, and that is house as a system. So your heat pump will only, um, well, it will always work efficiently, but it is very important that you address the air leakage and insulation issues in your home before you install a heat pump. Otherwise, th this may cause uh, that you are paying way too much in your on your energy bills, or you know that your heat pump is sized inappropriately for for you know the state of your home. So definitely check out your air leakage and your insulation issues before you get any new heating system installed. Also, lastly, just make sure that you select a heat pump that's properly sized for your home, designed for your climate, and that um, includes supplementary heating if that is necessary. So for example, if you live in an area that has lots of power outages, those are all really good questions to ask your contractor. And then once you have bought a heat pump, there's definitely a few things that you need to learn about how to operate a heat pump. Because as I explained, heat pumps are a different kind of heating system. So they also have a few different operation tips. And the first one is set it and forget it, um, especially um, because heat pumps don't burn a fuel to then create heat and blast it throughout your home. Um, heat pumps absorb heat and then pump it up to a higher level and transfer it in your home. So that a heat pump takes a little bit to get up to a certain temperature level, but once it's running and is at that temperature level, it runs extremely smoothly and very, very efficiently. In fact, it runs much more efficiently if you just leave it at a certain temperature level and you don't fiddle around with the, the thermostat setting that doesn't mean that you can't turn you know, your thermostat up to three degrees or, or down. It just means that a lot of people try to turn their heat pump off completely when they leave the house and they think they're doing something good, but really they're gonna be using a lot more electricity because the heat pump takes quite a while to get up to a certain temperature level. It would run a lot more efficiently if they just left uh, let it at their temperature level and the heat pump operation tip number two has to do with those of you who would be switching from a fossil fuel heating system to a heat pump so that is to set your thermostat to your comfort level if you're heating with gas or propane you're probably used to those intermittent blasts of hot air um, when your furnace kicks on and a heat pump in comparison offers a lot uh, heat at a, a lower temperature. So what comes out of your vents will in comparison feel cooler than your, you know, the intermittent blast of hot air that you're used to from your furnace. That doesn't mean that your heat pump can't heat your home to 21, 22 degrees or whatever you prefer. It totally does that. It just means that because it runs much more continuously, the, the air is a lot more, uh, I guess, runs a lot more continuously too and feels a little bit cooler. So if you have a hard time with that transition period, just turn your thermostat up or um, by a few degrees. And in terms of maintenance, some tips, um, heat pumps are pretty low maintenance. So just regularly check the manufacturer's manual or check it in the beginning. Uh, none of us really loves to read manuals, but it's worth it. And then definitely make sure to clean the indoor filters of dust and pollen, uh, especially after forest fire season. And then for mini split or multi-split heat pumps, of course, check the batteries in that remote control that you use for the indoor head um, as necessary. <laughs> every spring and every fall, you do wanna clear the outdoor unit of any debris, leaves, snow, or dirt, um, just to make sure that nothing gets in that fan there. 
And every year you wanna contact your installer to see if they could do a servicing appointment just to make sure that everything's fine with the refrigerant. Things that you can expect after getting your heat pump installed is that, like I said, if you are heating with natural gas, which I know a lot of you are, um, you won't have those intermittent blasts of hot air. A heat pump will run a lot more continuously and a lot, uh, yeah, a lot more continuously. So it's a very even kind of temperature distribution. You will um, be able to expect changes in your hydro bill one way or another, because if you are moving from a fossil fuel heating system and you hadn't heated with electricity before, then of course your hydro bills will increase. And also that's the fact if you, um, if you hadn't had a cooling system before and now you're cooling in the summer, then your summer bills will go up. Um, However, that is usually offset by a, of course, a decrease in your fossil fuel consumption. And if you are heating with electricity, then you can also likely see a decrease in your hydro builds because your heat pump will use a lot less electricity than your electric baseboards or furnace. Lastly, heat pumps uh, do make some noise and that is a concern for a lot of people. But I think a lot of people think about those older generations of heat pumps. Um, they were definitely a lot noisier than the younger generation of heat pumps. Um, every heat pump comes with a sound rating. So if the noise is a concern for you, then definitely talk to your contractor about the decibel rating of a heat pump. And also nowadays heat pumps, especially the ones that have a variable speed efficient compressor are a lot quieter. And every municipality has bylaws. So you can not just place an outdoor unit wherever you want. There's definitely certain rules where, where it's best to place it. And in fact, the city of Vancouver has a really great heat pumps and noise um, FAQ sheet. Um, which is linked in this presentation. And like Sam mentioned, you will get a copy of the presentation after the webinar. So you can definitely check that out. And with that, we're getting into the super interesting part of the evening, the rebates. I'll quickly take a sip of water. Okay, rebates, that's... Um, it's going to be a lot. Um, I do want to say again, the rebates are available as of today, November 24th, 2021. Rebates are changing. So when I show you the website where you can check out all the current rebates, definitely do that if you're planning to install a heat pump next year sometime. And also um, what I can say to start with is that there are two major rebate programs out there at the moment, a federal and a provincial one. And that is a lot of information. So we don't have a lot of time because I can totally talk about heat pump rebates until midnight tonight, <laughs> but um, nobody would stick around. So you might find yourself a little bit overwhelmed with all the rebate information, but don't worry, I will share the Clean BC Energy Coach service with you. And I highly recommend that you contact one of those energy coaches if you, you know, if you want to um, get more information about the rebates for your specific situation. So first of all, um, this is the website that I was talking about. That is the Clean BC Better Homes website. That's betterhomesbc.ca. This is your main information hub for any energy efficiency related upgrades like insulation, windows, heat pumps, finding a contractor, finding an energy advisor. There's a government funded program, a government funded website that has all the information about rebates and upgrades in one spot and in an unbiased, yeah, a completely unbiased. And this is your one-stop shop also to learn about rebates. The website comes with the energy coaching service. So it not only has all these search tool and FAQs, but it also has a team of 
actual real people <laughs> who are very well trained in all the rebates in BC. And you can call the Energy Coach service toll free from Monday to Friday, nine to five. This is not your typical 1-800 number where you can expect to be on hold for 30 minutes. These are actual people who will pick up the phone and they really know their stuff. You can also email them at ask at betterhomesbc.ca. And I do highly encourage you to get in touch with an energy coach if you find this information a little bit too much for the short amount of time. So definitely check out that uh, resource. And the Clean BC Better Homes website also comes with this rebate search tool. So that's what I meant by one-stop shop because you don't have to go on all the different websites, um, like all the utility and municipal websites to find your rebates. It's all in this rebate search tool where you put in your location like Port Moody and how you currently heat your home. And then you hit submit and you get a list of rebates that you could be eligible for. So let's say you're interested in a central heat pump with ductwork throughout the house, then you click on this uh, rebate and you will get a summary page with all the information you need, um, uh, eligibility requirements, application steps, and so on. So next, um, I'm gonna talk about those two rebate programs. So I mentioned that there is a federal and a provincial one, and I'm gonna get started with the provincial one. So those are the Clean BC Better Homes rebates. And those provincial Clean BC rebates, um, they you can only access them if you live in an eligible home. So that just means it has to be a single family, a side-by-side -side row home, a mobile home on a permanent foundation. And it just means that if you live in an apartment building or a condo building, you are not eligible for those rebates. Also the amount, the rebate amount that you can expect really highly depends on whatever heating system you're replacing. And I'll share all the amounts with you um, after this slide. The heat pump has to become your primary heating system. So you can't just install air conditioning. Um, it has to heat your home. And not any heat pump out there automatically qualifies for the rebates. It has to meet certain efficiency standards and has to be on a heat pump qualifying product list. So next, I'll show you all the different rebate amounts for different types of heating systems, starting with those of you who heat with electricity from BC Hydro. So that's those of you who have electric baseboards or an electric furnace as their main heating system. Um, if you install a mini split or um, yeah, a ductless heat pump, the rebate is $1,000. And if you're installing a central system with ductwork throughout the house, it's 2000 that rebate is funded by BC Hydro. So before you do anything, you really have to check with their eligibility tool if you're consuming enough electricity to be deemed eligible for this rebate. So all you need for this tool that you can find here, bchydro.com forward slash hero forward slash eligibility is you need your hydro account number and your home's square footage and it will tell you right away if you qualify or not. Next is for those of you who heat with wood, I believe that's nobody, but um, it's the same rebate amounts. So $1,000 for ductless heat pumps and 2000 for central systems. If you heat with electric baseboards and wood and you're not quite sure which category you fall under, then just use that eligibility tool from BC Hydro. And if you, fail it, then you're considered wood heated. And if you meet the requirements, then your home is considered electrically heated. And then um, now, from now on, we're going to talk about those homes that are heated with a fossil fuel. And by fossil fuel, we mean oil, gas, or propane, which I believe is the majority of you. And pretty recently, <laughs> in September, BC Hydro announced their new electrification plan. So to all the normal rebates, BC Hydro now tops that up with an extra 
$3,000 when installing an all electric heat pump um, moving away from a fossil fuel. So that's uh, in effect for all installations on or after September 28th this year. And these are the rebate amounts. So again, this is only for those of you who switch from gas, propane, or oil. And for installing a mini split or a central system, including that extra BC Hydro top up, your rebate would currently be $6,000, which is pretty amazing. There's also a few other types of heat pumps. So I talked about the dual fuel one earlier. So dual fuel means that it does use a fossil fuel backup. You don't get the full 6,000. You only, so to speak, get $3,000. And there's also heat pumps for in-floor heating or you know, for a hydronic heating system. Um, that's $3,000 and for lots of people who switch from a fossil fuel, um, they sometimes have to upgrade their electric service. So if you find yourself in a situation where you'd have to upgrade your panel um, to 100, 200 or 400 amp service, then you can get a $500 rebate in combination with your heat pump installation to help offset that cost. So that was the rebates and rebates really means you pay up front and you get reimbursed after applying. But there is also a provincial alternative for the rebates and that is a financing program. So for those who switch from oil, gas or propane, they can alternatively get uh, a loan uh, between $1,000 and $40,000. Um, with a very low interest rate, that's 0% over five years. You can either do the rebate or the financing, but not both. And if you decide to do the financing option, you have to work with a specific contractor. They're called finance registered contractors. Yep, that's basically it. Um, and there is an extra provincial program. It's a very neat program. It's called the group purchase rebate. And the group purchase rebate is also only for folks who switch from oil, gas, or propane to a heat pump. But basically, if you get together as a group, and that could be a neighborhood or just you and your friends, you and your coworkers, or, you know, a community group, and you s register for the group purchase rebate as a group, then, and you all install the heat pump around the same time, then you can all qualify for an extra bonus rebate on top. So for example, if you get 12 people together and you register as a group, um, then, and you all install your heat pump and apply, each of you gets an extra $350 on top. You do have to pre-register. So if you have any questions about this group purchase rebate, definitely call an energy coach. And it's also on betterhomesbc.ca forward slash rebates forward slash GPR. GPR just stands for group purchase rebate. You're probably wondering, <laughs> yeah, cool, but where, where do I find a contractor? And that you can also find on the CleanBC website. So on the CleanBC website under the menu button here, you will find an item that says find a contractor and we do have a contractor search tool so you can just select that you want to install a heat pump and type in port moody and submit and then you get a list of contractors that you can work with so you don't have to work with one of those contractors from the list in order to get a rebate but it is a really great place to get started because those contractors went through some additional best practice installation training. Okay, that is it provincially. So know a lot of information, but those energy coaches, they really know their stuff. So definitely give them a call. And I'm gonna now move on lastly <laughs> to the Canada Greener Homes Grant. And the Canada Greener Homes Grant is a federal program, completely separate from the provincial rebates. And it launched in May this year, end of May. 
what it does, it's basically offering up to $5,000 for all kinds of energy efficiency upgrades. So that could be a heat pump, it could be um, solar, it could be insulation. And it also offers $600 towards an Energide home evaluation because that Energide home evaluation is a prerequisite to getting started with this uh, program. You have to get that evaluation done um, before, in order to do this program. And um, this is a little bit different than the provincial program. Your home as a homeowner must be your home. You must be living in your own home. Uh, it just means that rental homes or homes that you don't live in don't qualify. The good news is that the provincial and the federal rebate programs, they stack. So you can access both, but keep in mind that you really have to make sure that you meet all the requirements. Both programs have their own sets of requirements. So keep that in mind. If you want to stack the programs and get as many rebates as possible, then it's definitely the best practice to start with an Energide home evaluation, which is the one that I had recommended in the beginning anyways for you know house as a system. Um, just like the contractors, you can find energy advisors on that Better Homes website as well. They have an energy advisor search tool and you can find that at betterhomesbc.ca forward slash EA. And then for Canada Green Homes, you do have to register through their online portal. Um, so you can find all that information on the Clean BC website, or if you search for Canada Green Homes program, and you can sign up and basically get the process started. Really, what you really need to know is that they are two separate programs. They come with their own set of requirements. So that can sometimes be a little bit challenging to navigate, but again, an energy coach help you, uh, can help you with that. And also keep in mind that they do have separate deadlines. Um, Canada Greener Homes, the federal program, actually doesn't have any deadlines at the moment. Whereas for all the provincial rebates, you always have to apply within six months of your purchase invoice date. And yeah, basically the, the, the other main difference is that for Canada Greener Homes, you have to get that evaluation done, then install your upgrades, get another evaluation done, and then you apply. But for the provincial clean BC rebates, you don't need an evaluation and you just always apply within six months. That was quite a lot of information. I know uh, I did warn you. So if you do have any questions about this, please get in touch with an energy coach. And um, there's also the Canada Greener Homes contact information. They have their own, um, their own client services and they also have the world's largest email address that I've ever seen. <laughs> and then we also on the right-hand side have BC Hydro's program administration for the provincial program and for the species as well. And with that, I would really like to thank you for, um, yeah, for being curious about heat pumps. I really hope you know more about them than you did an hour ago. And I'll leave this slide open. And Sam, I'll hand it over for you for any questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for uh, for learning about heat pumps. And I was answering some questions throughout the webinar um, in the chat. And again, a copy of those questions and answers will be sent to everyone in a follow up email as well. Uh, so what we're going to do now, it is 7.55. So we are pretty great for timing. I'm going to end the recording.